Jason, and this is Just Watches. All right, today I was offered a very special opportunity to check out this King Seiko Historical Collection Limited Edition from the year 2000. Now, while my foray into vintage watches is very limited, King Seiko in particular has stolen my heart. The only vintage watch I own is actually a King Seiko 45 series from 1970. So you can imagine that I said yes, absolutely, to this special opportunity. Now, if you want some history behind the King Seiko brand, which was produced by Daini while Seiko was divided into two competing subsidiaries, I invite you to check out that review of my own King Seiko 45 series, which I'll link in the upper right hand corner. Now, before we begin the review, I just want to remind you if you're enjoying the contents of this channel I invite you to subscribe and if you like the contents of this individual video please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. So for price and availability, this was limited to 2,000 pieces in the year 2000. At that time, the MSRP was $1,371, but adjusted for inflation, that is $2,184 at the time of this recording. However, you will likely have to pay more than that if you're able to find one for sale today. So starting with the case, it's 36 millimeters in diameter. It's 41 and a half millimeters lug to lug. It's only 11 millimeters of thick and one millimeter of that is the sapphire crystal. And then the lug width opening is 18 millimeters. Now this case design is the brainchild of Taro Tanako, who developed what is known as the grammar of design at Seiko. This called for mirror-like, high-polished, flat surfaces that perfectly reflected light and did not cause visual distortions. It also called for unique case designs. You can see the influence of this policy in modern Seiko as well, especially at the Grand Seiko level. Now, Zeratsu polishing, which is present on this watch, produces the extreme mirror-like finish that is present on the bezel, top, and sides of this case. It is difficult to capture on camera, but this watch gleams in person. This reissue really feels like a vintage King Seiko, but at least compared to my own vintage King Seiko, everything has been turned up to 11. Now, this is not the original strap. The original strap did come with this watch, but I don't want to risk any damage to the lugs during a strap change, so I just left it on this Velblenist, very dark blue leather strap. It's a lovely pairing to this watch and in fact I think this watch with its very neutral colors will be an absolute strap monster. The screw in case back is faithful to the vintage King Seiko and features a gold medallion. I love that they included this. It would feel wrong without it. You also get a bunch of data here. This is part of the Seiko Historical Collection, which is a variety of watches that actually came out in the year 2000. And then all of these watches were individually numbered. Additionally, this watch is water resistant to 100 meters. This watch is powered by the 4S15. This is an evolution of the movement used in the 5200 series of King Seiko watches in the 1970s, so it is a nice tie into that history. This 4S movement series would then go on to power Grand Seiko watches when they returned to mechanical movements in the 1990s. This is a hacking, hand-winding, 28,800 vibration per hour movement with a thermocompensating balance hairspring and a stated accuracy of minus 10 to plus 15 seconds per day. It also features a quick set date. The hand winding action is also buttery smooth unlike most Seiko movements. The 5mm push-pull crown is signed with KS for King Seiko and that is high polish against a deeply etched satin finish. The crown is small but proportional to the 36mm case and fits the style of the watch. The flat sapphire crystal is perfect and has the same large faceted edge that my King Seiko from 1970 has, which adds a layer of visual interest to the watch overall. Seiko also has some of the best anti-reflective coatings that I have experienced in person and this watch takes it to another level. While the facet is clearly visible due to the distortion of the dial, the crystal itself is almost invisible. This really lets the dial hands and indices pop. The Riha is finished to the same mirrored perfection as the rest of the case, which is striking in person. The dial is also true to its vintage inspiration, a very subtle champagne with an equally subtle sunburst effect. We have Seiko applied at 12 with automatic below, and then an applied KS with high beat written below. I'm sad they didn't include the Daini symbol as well, but the printing is ultra crisp. The indices are also true to their vintage inspiration, faceted and finished to the same mirror finish as the rest of the case with a black center that really helps with legibility. The date window is also very nicely framed. The hands are also true to their vintage inspiration, gabled in mirror-like, high polished with a black center. 
All of the dial furniture and the hands are finished to an extremely high level that I'm not sure will come through over the camera. You really have to see this watch in person. If my 1970s King Seiko is in 1080p, this watch really feels like it's in 4K. I'm also happy to report the minute hand is plenty long, as is the second hand which reaches almost all the way out to the rehot. The smooth 28,800 vibration per hour sweep is a nice touch as well, something I'm not used to on most Seikos. And here it is on the time graph right now. This watch is 21 years old. I believe it has been serviced since then, but we're getting excellent numbers. For one thing, this is the highest amplitude I think I've ever seen on a Seiko watch. And then the beat error is very low. And then one more position for you, crown up. We're getting minus one second a day, high amplitude still and zero beat error. So this is a very positionally accurate watch. And here is the watch on my six and three quarters inch wrist. I think this is a perfect size for me. I really love this. And then you can see it wears very low and snug to the wrist. And then just look at that Zeratsu polishing in the sun. It's gleaming and I promise you it's even better in person. Now since this is not a readily available watch, I'm hesitant to give my usual sets of pros, cons, and if I think this watch is worth the money. Rather, I will say that this watch took me by surprise in person. In photos, it appears to be a very true to historical style King Seiko reissue, but in person the level of finishing shines through. Not only is this watch faithful to its roots, it's extremely well executed. I'm a huge fan of vintage King Seiko and I think it represents a golden era of Seiko mechanical watchmaking. I'm definitely grateful to have spent some time with this beautiful watch and I will be sad to send it on to its owner. So there you have it, the Seiko King Seiko Reissue SZVN001 from the historical collection from the year 2000. What do you guys think of this beautiful little watch? Let me know in the comments below. As always, if you're enjoying the content of this channel, I invite you to subscribe. And if you like the contents of this individual video, please give it a thumbs up. That's all for this time. My name is Jason and you have been watching Just Watches.